Hey Doggies Tragics, it's the Bark Recap, round 26. Um, hope you're all enjoying the tumultuous week of being a Bulldog fan. <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, what's been happening the last week, uh, before I talk about the lower grade results from last weekend and what's coming up this weekend. So it appears a group of players are unhappy about the training load. I'm um, not too sure how many as it, it changes daily, as does the amount of players a guy has to wrestle for being late to training. Um, it goes from 4 to 8 to 12, the whole squad. It, it seems a bit silly. <laughs> so I'm not going to speculate on who, because that's all I'm doing, is just pretending to know something I really don't. Um, only the people within those walls would know. There's also a respect for privacy on a delicate matter of mental health, at hand, and it would be cruel to name and single out players, you know, for their own future and their own welfare. So I'm going to leave that alone. What I can judge, though, is through performance from last year to this year, and it's been a, a, a decline, in my opinion, as the season has progressed. Um, you know, there's obviously reasons for that. There can be different reasons, such as injury and, and such, but every club goes through injuries. Um yeah, you, know, you can judge players' efforts as well on the field, and that doesn't really matter um, the level of talent that a player has um, if it's based on effort. Now, is it the players that are overtrained? Maybe. It could be fatigue. It could be a possible reason, given what's come out over the last week. But what it is pointing to more and more for me the last week is an unhappy playing camp. You don't have to be Einstein to, to see that Cameron Sarando is trying to change the culture of the club um, and within the club. Yeah, we saw his methods in pre-season with a strong focus on, on culture. Instead of coming in and slowly making his mark on, the, on expectations, he has come in all guns blazing and wants to set a standard from word go. Um, yeah, a good way to measure the impact of that would be to actually know if it's players who are new to the club or whether it's players who have been in our system a while and are just not adapting to the, new, to the level required now. That would be a good indication of the problem for some, for some years now because it's just been happening too long. Um, the club finds itself in a pickle with recruitment. We know how we are investing a lot in the 18 to 21 year olds. It's been well documented by the board and, and um, Gus and, you know, who will be moulded into Cameron's vision while they are coming through. And the talent is there, which I think, you know, we will continue to add pieces to over the, you know, the next 12 months and moving on. But what about the current squad of 30? Gus has alluded to the fact we have plenty of money available several times. Um, add to the fact that players on decent money are leaving and we are signing fringe players on one to two year deals for value, it would still leave a significant amount, you would think. The problem is we didn't really act earlier in the season when players were available. Um, and they've either been re-signed by their current clubs or they've moved on to another club. And now we have this problem within the squad. So the problem is there is there's very, there's very little on the player market. And, you know, the NRL require a high amount of cap money to be spent yearly. It's imperative we don't fall into a trap of overpaying players who aren't proven on long-term contracts that are going to fuck us up again. While the 18 to 21 year olds are coming through, they will end up, you know, being forced to leave. So it's very important we get this recruitment right over the next 12 months uh, while those players are being filtered through. The club has some big decisions to make over the coming couple of weeks about who is retained and who is let go. Um, once that is clearer, Identifying the right moves in recruitment 
and promoting players within will be key. It's quite obvious to me we lack leadership. Three things, leadership, experience, and starting quality players. There's just simply too many bench players in our squad. Um, it's about bringing in proven quality, even if it's for a short period of time. And, you know, we could probably afford to pay them a little bit more than what they're currently earning if it's for, for a short period of time because there's plenty of cap money available. We've just got to make sure that we don't overpay them for too long. And, you know... Um, and that could perhaps, you know, those short-term contract, they, 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 they could be perhaps lead to a longer deal if they've, you know, proven, um, you know, that they're worth keeping and they're playing for something and they're, and they're adding to the squad. Well, then they could get longer contracts. So let's see what happens there. Um, I won't go too, in, too much into detail on last week's NRL game versus the Eagles. It was pretty clear to see that the players... We're not in the right frame of mind, and they weren't playing, you know, for much to the to the detri detriment of the loyal home fans that wanted one last hurrah before the season's out. It was disappointing. It made me realise over the last week: is it more about our actual training methods or about the players' unrest and lack of morale? We need to sort it out and quickly. And if that. If that means weeding out certain players, then move them on. Um, in New South Wales Cup, they fell to its sixth straight loss, 32-22 to against the Eagles, and you know, they failed to make the finals. Um, even if they had won because of the results, um, I think the Raiders winning against the Bears proved that we wouldn't have been able to make it anyway. But, you know, that seemed to coincide with players being unavailable six weeks ago um, and a, a lack of experience to come in and replace them and players who simply just don't want to be there. That's what it looks like. Disappointing either way. The only good thing, I think, is the flag players such as Damon Marshall, Lachlan Vale, Harry Hayes, Lipoy Hopoi, they'll all gain experience, you know, from playing in that side, even if they are losing. Um, you know, it's playing against older guys and then they'll take that uh, back in the flag you know, for the finals. And, yeah, on Jersey flag, they had a strong win over the Sea Eagles, 28-6 to at Belmore. Uh, Papali'i, Afualo, and Underhill tries. Mazzoni got a double. Papali'i, four goals. Uh, it was good to see the boys come up, um, the boys come up and fill in for those that went up to Cup. Um, players such as Toilalo, Smith, Vito, Underhill, you know, Hanson, getting good game time uh, in preparation for the finals. Um, finishing second, we now play third-placed Cronulla Sharks on Sunday in a qualification final, and that's to play the Roosters in a major semi-final the following week. Um, we've named a very strong lineup this week. With the likes of O'Neill, Joseph O'Neill and Oluwapu in the halves. Um, Joe Ash is at fullback again. Clark in the centres again. And a good looking pack welcoming back Hopoi, Hayes and Marshall. Um, so best of luck to the lads this weekend. And uh, we'll talk a bit about that game next week. As well as wrapping up the NRL season. Okay, that's all from me guys. I'll talk to you all next week. Have a good one.
Peace!